Um, every cell, uh, regardless of what kind of cell it is, uh, is bordered by a plasma membrane. This goes back to our understanding of uh, phospholipids. So here we have those lipids that have the uh, hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tail. It's got um, a plasma membrane is a double membrane. It's two parts. So it's got uh, the heads going out and the tails going in and then the tails going in and the heads going out. Um, this is the outside of the cell. It's got these markers here on the outside that make uh, your body able to recognize what type of cells they are. Um, and the function of this plasma membrane is to hold all of the contents of the cell inside, um, bring in the food and nutrients um, through these receptors and channels and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, they help in uh, building and exporting the molecules and it allows interactions with the environment. So it's got uh, an interaction going on here outside of the cell. Uh, it allows it to, uh, to basically talk with the other cells that are around it. So here we see a plasma membrane going from the inside of cell one. Uh, here we have the inside of cell two. But look, we're looking at under this uh, electron microscope uh, 100,000 times. It is so tiny, it's uh, very, very hard to study the outside of it. So basically, this is your gatekeeper of the cell. If you think about the, um, the borders of our country, or you think about uh, like the borders of our military base, um, we've got things that are, are standing guard around uh, the outside. Um, we have these gates that allow uh, things to go in and come out. Um, basically, your plasma membrane is, um, is the border of the cell. Um, why are they so complex? Um, we already just discussed that. Food and nutrients, they dispose of the waste products, so uh, take the bad stuff from the inside and get it out. Um, they build and export certain types of molecules, uh, regulate heat exchange, and regulate the flow of materials in and out of the cells. So uh, as we just saw in the previous picture, we've got our hydrophilic head, so the heads are both facing out and facing in. Imagine that this is a sphere. This isn't a two-dimensional structure. This is a, this is a ball that has the outside of the ball facing out, the inside of the ball facing in. Um, the hydrophilic heads are facing out, the hydrophilic heads are facing in, and then the tails are all attracted to one another. So they keep things intracellular and extracellular. Um, did I hit time already? Oh no, I still have plenty more time. Uh, here we have molecules embedded within the plasma membrane that help it to perform its functions. So uh, these little gatekeepers, um, these are like little transport channels. Um, in this case, uh, we have this uh, intracellular fluid on the inside, extracellular fluid on the outside. These are little branched carbohydrates um, that make up these markers that tell you like, oh, this is the Canadian border, or this is the Mexican border. Tells you what, what it's bordering. And these uh, proteins are either um, sticking all the way through and then some of them are just on the outside or just on the inside. And basically, the shape of the plasma membrane is what uh, determines what, the, what kind of proteins are going to be stuck in it. So uh, what determines whether a protein resides on the surface or extends all the way through? Um, it is just based on uh, what kind of protein it is and those uh, hydrophilic regions and hydrophobic regions. So the four primary types of proteins, um, these are the membrane proteins. Uh, the first one that we have over here, this is a receptor protein. So Basically, what the receptor protein does is it binds to external chemicals um, in order to regulate processes within the cell. So it is um, collecting chemicals from the outside, the particular chemicals that it wants. Um, here we have recognition proteins. This is basically your cellular fingerprint uh, so that it can be recognized by other types of cells, like this is a muscle cell, this is a nerve cell, this is a blood cell, this is a white blood cell. Uh, we have transport proteins, which are these little channels 
that take things from the outside and suck them through to the inside or spit them back out. Um, and then finally, we have our enzymatic proteins, um, which are going to um, accelerate the processes that are happening inside or outside, oh, inside or outside of the cell. And uh, you can see around here we have our carbohydrate chains, which are making these fingerprints. Um, and we have uh, cholesterol, which makes sure that the, um, that the membrane remains fluid. So when we have uh, faulty membranes, uh, this can cause disease. If you've ever heard of cystic fibrosis, um, this is an example of, uh, of a disease that's caused by a faulty uh, membrane. Um, if you've seen somebody with cystic fibrosis, my first uh, experience with people that had cystic fibrosis was when I was eight, I started going to a camp for diabetics, and uh, they also had the camp for people with cystic fibrosis, and they used to beat them on the back to get all the fluid out of their lungs, because basically because they have this, um, this faulty membrane, they get this sticky mucus that builds up inside of their lungs, and um, it can cause... Uh, decreased lung function, they can't get enough oxygen, so they don't have a whole lot of energy. Uh, they get this increased risk of bacterial infection. And so uh, back then, they didn't have these vests that you can see here, which is basically uh, inflating and deflating and squeezing the mucus up out, and then the person coughs it out. Uh, they actually used to have these inversion contraptions where the person would lean upside down and they would beat them on the back so they could spit all this uh, mucus out of their lungs. And so um, kind of a, a scary disease. Um, we'll go ahead and end there uh, with the uh, membrane surfaces. I'll pick up there the next time. So see you next Tuesday. And I'm actually going to put um, homework on Springboard. And it's not going to be something that's long or hard to do, but it's something that you'll have to do for Tuesday. So check on Springboard. Yes, check on Springboard. Have a wonderful weekend. I was asking, because I couldn't find your slides from Tuesday. Let me check. Give me one second.